Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna spend a bit of time reviewing our quadratic functions. And so let's go ahead and start by reminding ourselves exactly what a quadratic function is. And so a quadratic function is any function that can be put into the form of f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And you'll often see in textbooks or resources that this form ax squared plus bx plus c is the standard form for our quadratic function. So a couple other things you wanna review or remember about our quadratic functions is that they really only have this one shape. A parabola is the name of our shape, and it can be either a concave up or a concave down parabola. And so whenever we graph one of our quadratic functions, we're always gonna get these shapes that we call a parabola. And if we're working with our quadratic functions in standard form, our parabolas are always gonna be concave up or opening up or concave down and opening down. So this kind of smiley face is our concave up parabola and our frowny face or our bent down uh, curve is our concave down parabola. And remember, we can determine the concavity of a parabola just by looking at one piece of its equation, and that's that leading coefficient or that number that x squared is being multiplied by. If that number in front of x squared is a positive number, meaning a is greater than zero, then we're going to have a concave up parabola. And if our a value or our leading coefficient is negative, then we are going to have a concave down parabola. Another important fact about our quadratic functions or our parabolas is they always either have a absolute minimum or an absolute maximum, depending on if they are concave up or concave down. And we always refer to these points, whether it is a minimum or a maximum determined by the concavity as the vertex of our parabola. So if we have a concave up parabola, our vertex is gonna to correspond to that minimum value or that bottom of our parabola. And if we have a concave down parabola, the vertex is always gonna to correspond to that maximum or the top of our parabola. And so we're gonna to wanna to know how to find this vertex point uh, for our parabolas, especially when we're using quadratic functions to model some situation that we wanna find the minimum or the maximum for. And one of the things we learned in our previous math classes is how to find that vertex. And the thing that we can remember to help us start finding our vertex is that just the x coordinate of our vertex is always gonna be given by x equals negative b over 2a when our quadratic function is in that standard form. This uh, equation x equals negative b over 2a, if we graph that, would also give us a vertical line. And we refer to that vertical line x equals negative b over 2a as the line of symmetry for our parabola. So earlier we reviewed how to graph our linear functions or our lines, and in order to graph our line, we need two points our line goes through, or one point and the slope, but really it all comes down to two points our line goes through. For a parabola or a quadratic function, we need a little bit more information. Basically, we need three points, but one of those points we always want to be the vertex. And so if we want to graph a parabola by hand, at minimum, we are going to need three points. We want one of those points to be the vertex of our parabola, and we also need an additional pair of points. And ideally, those pair of points are gonna be what we refer to sometimes as symmetric points, meaning they have the, the same y value. So this would be like a pair of symmetric points and our vertex. To graph this parabola, and over here we have our vertex, and then any pair of symmetric points can also be used along with the vertex to graph our parabola or quadratic function. And ideally, if they exist, we want that pair of symmetric points to be the x-intercepts of our quadratic function or parabola. And so if we're trying to find the x-intercepts, remember to find an x-intercept in general, you set your function equal to zero and solve for x. So we'd have to solve the equation zero equals ax squared plus bx plus c. But we can solve that using our good old quadratic formula, which is negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac also over 2a. Or you can write that as negative b plus or minus that square root with everything over 2a. 
All right, so this quadratic formula is one of those super important formulas in mathematics that you've probably seen before and hopefully already have dedicated to memory. If you don't already have it dedicated to memory, I have a, at least one way that might help you dedicate it to memory. There are some songs you can sing to help you remember the quadratic formula, but I am not a great singer. But there's also a story that goes along with the quadratic formula that I think is pretty funny and helps uh, me and some students remember it. So here is how the story goes to help you remember the quadratic formula, and it's really for this form where everything is over 2a. So the story goes, there was a sad boy who was unsure about going to a radical party. The boy was kind of a square, so he missed out on four awesome chicks, and the party was over at 2 a.m. So I don't know if that helps you remember it, but at least it's amusing. Either way, we're going to have to know the quadratic formula to help us find things like zeros of our quadratic functions, as well as zeros of our polynomials in general. In this example, we want to graph the quadratic function given by the equation f of x equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. And so remember, to graph a quadratic function or a parabola, we need three points. One of those points is the vertex. And the other are going to be the x-intercepts or a pair of symmetric points. All right, so let's go ahead and start by finding the vertex for our quadratic function. And to get started, we have to remember that the x-coordinate of the vertex is always given by negative b over 2a, or that first little piece of our quadratic formula. And so remember, we can only use this negative b over 2a process if our quadratic function is in that standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, that has the form that is currently expressed in. So we have to identify what a, b, and c are, although we don't really need c for this vertex part. So a is our leading coefficient, the number in front of x squared. b is our linear coefficient, or the number in front of x, and we include the signs for these values. So that'll be negative 4, and even though we don't need it, we know that c is going to be negative 5. So that means the x-coordinate for our vertex is going to be negative b, so that'll be positive 4, divided by 2 times 1. Well, that's 4 over 2, or it simplifies to just 2. That's just the x-coordinate of our vertex. We also need the y-coordinate if we want to plot the point that we call our vertex. And so now to find the y-coordinate, well, we just plug x into our function. So that'll give us 2 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 5. So that'll give us negative 9. And so we can go ahead and plot our point to negative 9. Let's go ahead and say that's right about there. We're not worried too much about detail or scale for the sketch. And so this will show up as we produce the rest of the information for our parabola, but what we know about our vertex is that it's going to be the minimum or lowest point on our parabola because our leading coefficient for our parabola is positive, meaning it's going to be opening up or a concave up parabola. So we're going to have a, an upward bending U shape like this, but now we need to find at least two more points that our parabola goes through. And let's go ahead and find our x-intercepts as that pair of symmetric points. And so to find our x-intercepts, we set y equal to 0 or our function equal to 0 and solve for x. So we have to solve 0 equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. And we can use the quadratic formula to solve this equation. The quadratic formula will always work, but it sometimes can take a bit of time to compute. So we always want to try to factor our quadratic functions or equations first. So in this case, we actually can factor our function. It'll factor as x minus 5 times x plus 1. And from that, we can see that our zeros are going to be at x equals 5 or at x equals negative 1, right? The only way this product is equal to 0 is if each of the factors is equal to 0. x minus 5 will be equal to 0 when x is equal to 5, and x plus 1 will be equal to 0 when x is equal to negative 1. So that means we have to go through the point negative 1, 0. That's one of our x-intercepts, and our other x-intercept is the point 5, 0. 
No, I didn't spend a lot of time establishing a detailed and accurate scale here, but this is at least enough information to get a good sketch of our quadratic function on the board. And so we have the bare minimum we need to sketch the graph of our quadratic function. We could always add in more detail if we desired to do so. But just remember, here's our vertex, 2, negative 9, and here are our x-intercepts at negative 1, 0, and 5, 0. Remember, our parabola is symmetric about that line of symmetry that goes through the vertex, and we can see that symmetry here as the distance from our line of symmetry to these x-intercepts is going to be the same distance away from the line of symmetry, right? If we go three units to the right of the line of symmetry on the x-axis, we hit our point at 5, 0. If we go three units to the left from the line of symmetry on our x-axis, we hit our other x-intercept at negative 1, 0. And this, is a, this line of symmetry can be very useful for finding other pairs of symmetric points. So we know our line of symmetry and have some information about this point here. Well, from the x coordinate of that point, we can measure that distance from this x value corresponding to our line of symmetry. And then if we just go that distance on the opposite side, we will get the point symmetric to the first point. That's often useful if you're trying to find a pair of symmetric points and your parabola doesn't actually have any x-intercepts. That'll occur like if this was our vertex and we were a concave down parabola, we'd never find x-intercepts, or if your vertex is above the x-axis and it's concave up, you'll never find any x-intercepts. You won't be able to solve your quadratic formula even for any real solutions.